So we're going to kind of run through it by today. Thank you very much for y'all for coming out. I realize it is early. Um, we'll we'll kind of get through this. Um, we do have, we'll have coffee, donuts, bagels, and some things in the back um, that should be set up while we're in here chatting. Um, and hopefully that'll help it be a little bit um, <laughs> less frustrating on us this morning. How advising day is going to work, I don't know at the moment. Um, I know a lot of you have scheduled appointments with your advisors. We will do the best we can, right? So if there is nothing that ever happens in communication, is that we've learned how to be flexible and to adapt. And at any given moment, there could be a situation you have to overcome. So that is what we're doing right now. The good news is we're going to give you a lot of information about uh, the spring semester. Um, and we can talk a little bit about internships and some other things. I will apologize right now for the <laughs> presentation. This is an early version that wasn't quite complete on my laptop, so I could actually get at it, as opposed to the complete version, which is somewhere lost in this network that we're having trouble with this morning. So we will kind of move through and go there. Feel free to ask questions as we go through. We will go ahead and um, um, I'm going to share a little bit, then we'll have some of the professors talk about classes that they're teaching in the spring, and uh, we'll go from there, all right? So, here we are. Um, as I said, we're going to talk about a whole variety of things. Um, spring classes, I'm going to talk a little bit about internships. And I, we get a lot of the same questions about internships. I know you guys have some questions about internships, and how do we go about it? So I'll kind of walk you through that this morning. Um, We'll talk a little bit about audit and advising. I'm going to give you some information. Um, I'd like to give some really good reminders about audits, uh, doing, running an audit, how to do it, and also some things to think about as you go through your advising appointment. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the student organizations and the radio station, about some of the upcoming things that are going on there. And then we'll kind of maybe take a little break and hopefully get some coffee and the network will magically come back. Um, so you have it. The spring calendar is out there on the website. The one that we can't get to right now. Um, <laughs> but it is. this is the spring calendar. Classes are starting again on January 10th. So those of you that were around here last spring, you know that was kind of a funky start to the spring semester. We started very late, almost in February, and then we were online. Currently, there are no plans for that. Regular semester, January 10th, we will start. Um, we have the, the 17th is uh, Martin Luther King Day, um, spring break and spring recess, etc. out there. And we will be finishing kind of back to that traditional time of right at the beginning of May with finals week. So internships. How many are thinking about, stressing about, wanting to know about internships? Kind of what's going on with it, right? So... For the spring semester particularly, I will be the instructor for the COM 483, the internship course. Um, when you register for that course, kind of how we go about doing that, you need to find the internship. You need to work out with that internship employer what exactly uh, your, your duties and responsibilities are. There are forms that you have to get them to fill out on the COM department website. Uh, the employer's job description, they will fill that out. You need to discuss the internship that you're going planning to do with your advisor. Not me, with your advisor. That's the first step. You and your advisor will work that out. Once your advisor says yes, it's good to go. I need that form. Then I will give you permission to register for COM 483. Okay, after I talk with the advisor and have your form. Um, when you do your internship, for it to count towards your degree, you must not take it until you have 90 credit hours. Okay. Um, if you work 150 hours for three credits, that needs to be done while you are registered for the COM 483 course. You can't go and do an internship and then come back later and say, oh, I, I did it um, last fall. Can I go ahead and register for the course and get the credit? Nope, not how it works. You have to be registered for the course while you're doing the internship. When you do the internship, your internship employer will do a midterm evaluation. They will do a final evaluation of you. 
Um, you will be required to keep a log of the hours you work, as well as kind of the tasks and the responsibilities and the things that you did. You're also responsible for writing kind of a reflection paper about the experience. So we'll, and we give you some guidelines on that, what to include with that. But it should be about what did you learn from the experience? How does this help you kind of think about what you want to do going down the road? What are some things that you would have liked to have seen differently? Those kinds of things in the reflection <coughs> paper. In the semester, once we have your final evaluation, your uh, reflection paper, your log, etc., cetera, you, were, you then get the grade for the class. Internships are SU, so they're satisfactory, unsatisfactory. You do not get a letter grade for them. Okay. Um, in terms of finding an internship, I think this is one of the things that most people stress about the most. Um, what I will tell you is we have provided as much as we can in terms of when we hear about internships. It's important to talk to your advisor about that. Right? Talk to your advisor about what your ideas are for internships, what you're thinking about. As you think about your internship, you need to think about what semester you're planning to do it. You can do an internship any semester. There's pros and cons to all of that. Right? If you do it during a fall or spring semester, the big advantage is that's included with the regular tuition for fall and spring. Right? That's great. However, you have to balance working at an internship with taking all of your courses during the semester. So you'll have to work out that schedule with your employer. The benefit of the summertime is that you can work, you can go home and do an internship someplace else as opposed to locally. Um, it might give you a little bit wider range of what you might be wanting to look for. However, we realize tuition is a little bit different in the summertime and you have to pay extra for that. So you need to kind of think about that. I understand that a lot of folks want to take their internships in either the fall or the spring semester and that is fantastic. Um, there's a lot of great internships around. Um, if you're looking for ideas, talk to your advisor. You can come talk to me. We also have an affiliate website that I was going to show you. Um, when you go to the comm department website on wcu.edu, right, there is a, uh, a link on that homepage of our comm department website that says learn more. Right? You click on the learn more and it takes us to the comm department affiliate website, which is a deeper richer website that we have a lot more information on. There is job boards on there. Um, there are job links to job boards that are specifically for the communication industry. Um, there are um, postings that we hear about uh, here in the department and post out there. And when we hear about internships, we post them out there. Um, let it, come and talk to us about what your circumstances are. Right? Very, quite often, we have uh, some students that want to do because they don't have a car and they need to do it during the, the regular semester. We can help you with some of those arrangements looking for a, 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 an internship close by. Folks have done some internships on campus. We're a little picky about how you do those, so you need to talk to us about what your plans are, what you're thinking about doing, but we can give you some ideas for there. The most important thing, though, to remember about an internship is that you need to spend time doing this. How many folks are in or have taken 296? Intro to Professional Development. That is what that course is for, right? I know that there's a lot of things that we ask you to do in that class. A lot about what that course is about is how do I go about finding an internship? How do I get my resume together? How do I start looking for internships out there? Take those assignments seriously. Use them to try and find the best internship you can. The earlier you start working on where you want to be and how you want to do it and making these plans, the more options you will have. Okay. Um, internships, you can take up to nine credits of internship. Right? So you can do internships at different times, you can do multiple internships. Personally, I always recommend if you can figure out how to do more internships, the better. That will just help you in the long run once you graduate or out there kind of looking for a job. You must take three credits of internship, if you want to take, say, six credits of internship, you must work 300 hours instead of the 150 hours. Right? So be conscious of that as well, like those more hours. Um, questions about internships? Yes, ma'am. Could you be an instructor for the internship during the summer? In the summertime, you will, you, you will pick the internship supervisor. So we do it a little bit different. Fall and spring, there's one professor that does internships. This spring, it's me. 
Um, in the summertime, um, I actually will not be an internship advisor in the summertime, um, but other, others do. Dr. Farmer does, Dr. Miltonsmeyer does, um, uh, Professor Walsh does, you know, it's up to you, um, uh, Professor Connolly. Um, so it'll be up to you to kind of work that out. Um, Dr. Skosowska does, so um, that'll be, you can work that out with that. Other questions about internships, because I know that sometimes this is one of those angsty kinds of things that we want to kind of think about. <clears throat> the biggest thing that I can tell you is talk to them. Think a little bit about what your interests are and where you might be able to do this, and we can give you ideas of places to go look. The easy thing is to say, I'm going to look on Indeed for an internship posting. And guess what? It's going to be near impossible to find an internship that way. A better way to do it is to start targeting different types of organizations, different types of companies, and different locations, and doing some searching around to get a little bit more specific about what you're trying to do. And then we can give you some ideas about how to maybe even approach what you think is an ideal employer, even if they don't have an internship posting, say, on a job board. There's a, there's a way you might be able to still get an internship with them, but you're going to take and do a little bit of work. And I'm going to, I keep kind of emphasizing doing this kind of work because it really is important and doing this kind of background work and thinking and spending time on it helps. One of, if you're in one of my classes and I talk about internships, you've heard me talk about some of our previous students. All right, Caleb Sullivan is one of our graduates. He did two internships. The second internship, he did it with the uh, Jackson County Tourism Development Authority. They had to create the position for him. He approached them. They actually had to go to the county commissioners to get that approved to pay him to be an intern. And he did that internship his last semester that he was uh, getting ready to graduate. They then liked him so much and they put into their budget for the next year a full-time job and Caleb works for them as a full-time job to this day. It's, it really does help. Um, we've had, in, uh, we had an intern that inter, inter, interned over at in University Communications and Marketing. She did a bang up job for them, loved them, right? Um, uh, they loved her, they ended up bringing her on and paying her to be a student worker even all throughout her last year here at Western. From there, she applied to a couple different jobs and had some interviews, one was to do um, communication and marketing for UNC Greensboro. She didn't get the job. You know who did? Another one of our graduates. Thank you very much. Instead, Elise Holbrook, who didn't get that job, she got a job out at University of Utah and is loving life out there doing that job. Right? These internships are important, so spend the time. Right. So when you're taking 296, that's usually in that 60 credit hour time frame, 60 70-ish hours that you've got. That gives you a couple semesters to get to the 90 hours that you need, and then you can go do your internship and you will be set up really nicely. So spend the time doing that. Um, and like I said, come talk to us about it. We hear about different internships all the time. We have contacts about them, so come and talk to us. Right. Other, any other questions about internships? Um, so this is where I was going to show you on the website. Um, we have these, so the communication.wcu.edu, the affiliated website, we have job postings, internship postings that are out there. Um, you can ask us about internships that even previous students that have had, and then I would go check those organizations out. Even if they do not have a posting at the moment for an internship. We know that they have done internships there, and so that would be a great uh, place to potentially reach out to and say, hey, I'm interested in kind of doing an internship with you. Can we work something out? Right. So take a look at that stuff. Okay, spring course offerings. Um, as usual, we offer these every semester, um, COM 296 and COM 496. So COM 296 is the Intro to Professional Development class. In that class, as I just kind of mentioned, it's really about getting you set up to do things like hunt for internships and eventually hunt for jobs. In that course, that is where you start building your website and your e-portfolio using um, WordPress, right? And you will go through and build that. That is important, right? Take the time and invest in building that. 
because employers actually ask for those materials. So this will give you a place to start holding, putting your stuff out there. Um, this is the kind of thing that will live on beyond your time here at Western. Right? This is why this is important. The other thing is it gives you uh, skills in building uh, websites using WordPress. I can't tell you how many of our graduates have come back and told me, oh yeah, good thing I had to do that WordPress thing because guess what I have to do with my job now? I have to make website updates and I have to know WordPress. Right? So there is, a, there is method to the madness behind having you do those things. Um, usually in that 60 to 90 credit range is when you take 296. So a semester or two before you're looking to do your internship is a great time to be taking that class because it helps you kind of do the work to find that internship. <coughs> Senior seminars, COM 496. Some things to remember about this class. It is one credit, not three. So when we're kind of adding things up towards graduation, make sure you're remembering it's one credit. Typically, you take COM 496 the semester you're getting ready to graduate. I refer to this sometimes as the job hunting class. A lot of what you will do in this class is you will refine your resume, you will do cover letters, you will look for jobs, you will continue to build your website and e-portfolio. We expect you to have in the neighborhood of a minimum of six pieces for your portfolio when you graduate. These should be finished, publishable, published kinds of things, right? They should be polished and really good. The idea is you need to show off to your potential employers out there what you can do. And this is the place to keep all those kinds of things out there. When you think about portfolio pieces, as a department, we talk all the time about the kinds of things that we want you to have in there. We do try to include some of those things into our courses and our course assignments, right? However, when you're looking for an internship, this is one of the questions that you need to have in your head. Will I be able to produce something that shows here's what I did for my internship? Right? Um, those, uh, uh, if there's other kind of student work that you do, like we have student workers that work in the department. You can volunteer to work on things with the Western Carolina Journalist or with the Com Department website to produce things. All of that kind of stuff counts, but you should be looking for those opportunities to do work that can end up in your portfolio, right? Either from classes, internships, volunteer work, etc. It can even be things that you're doing for fraternity and sorority kinds of things. Again, talk to us. Ask us about the kinds of things that are in there. We can give you some guidance on that. Um, portfolio pieces also don't have to be, um, they can be things like, Plans, right? So a lot of our courses in the PR sequence, for instance, you have to do planning. Um, in crisis communication, you have to do planning. It is key when you work with an external organization as part of a class, as we do in some of our community engagement service learning projects, you must get permission for whatever you produce for that client organization to be included in your portfolio. It's an important step to do. It is, it is a little bit more work to get that, to figure out how to make sure you're presenting it in such a way that your client is comfortable with their proprietary work that you have done for them. But it is also something you can say, look, I did this real thing for this real organization and this is how that organization benefited. This wasn't just student work, right? This was actually professional quality work that we did for an organization. So those become important. You should have some time between 296 and 496. Right? You should be thinking about as you're setting up your schedule to build some time in between there um, to kind of get the best advantage of these courses. All right, so I'm gonna go into all the, the individual course offerings. Um, we have a, kind of a new course offering, a new old course offering. Um, that we're going to do, and I'm going to turn it over to Patrick Mullaney from uh, Athletics and Video Operations to talk a little bit about this. Thanks, Pat. Howdy, howdy, all. Everybody still asleep? <laughs> I am. Uh, as Scott said, I'm Patrick Mullaney, the Assistant Director of Video Operations. In that picture, in the purple shirt, is my old director. Uh, I'm currently the Assistant Director to no one. So, yeah, that's a whole lot of fun. So I got you guys to worry about next semester. Uh, so, in this... The what? 
He, he definitely was, yeah. And we miss him very much, and right next to him, Sam Wallace, that helped build out that entire uh, studio with Will Adams. Uh, but as I said, for the spring, we've got opportunities to work in sports video. I know not everyone's interested in sports. You know, raise my hand. I'm not interested in sports, but I love my job. We solve problems every day with broadcasting and a whole lot of toys that cost a lot of money. And I'm not going to talk how much it's a lot of money. Uh, but uh, this is really a cool opportunity to work on all this equipment. It's still the same equipment. With, it's used in news stations. It's used in uh, serialized television. It's used in live performances. It's used at the Emmys. It's all standard equipment. Uh, we just use it for sports applications. Uh, replay units and video switchers and audio mixers graphic systems, you name it, we got it. It's really fun to use, and uh, you're more than welcome to join us and work on it. I also plan on bringing in, uh, probably through Zoom, some of my alumni friends and people in the industry to talk with you guys at some point throughout the semester, or several points if I can, uh, and give you advice and sort of answer questions about what's it like to work in the real world at different stages between you know, a year into the job or 10 years into the job, or industry and how that changes. Uh, so. If you'd like to, we, we'd love to have you, and, I really need the support. We have 44 broadcasts to do in the spring. I need the help. Just, just, yeah, just a little bit. But that's about it. Is there any questions? No? All right. Thank you. Sure. I'll just add a little bit to how this is going to work. Um, in the catalog, it lists me as the instructor for this. This will be conducted exactly like an internship. All right, so Patrick and I have talked a little bit about this. If you're interested in this course, right? You need to get in touch with Patrick, talk to him about it, right? You must have taken TV1 for this course. That is a requirement for this practicum. You will be working um, primarily on some of the games in the spring. So baseball, softball, soccer, uh, basketball. Softball, baseball, volleyball. Volleyball, all, all kinds of things, right? That you would be working on in the spring. Um, it is also an SU course. Right, so you will be working with Patrick. He will also then do just like an internship where you will have a midterm evaluation, you will have a final evaluation, you will have to do a reflection paper, keep track of your hours. For this course, you must work a minimum of 75 hours right, over the course of the semester. So it's not as much as an internship, but you need to be doing that as well. And again, you'll be working with Patrick on this stuff. He will be assigning you, doing the work, right? and then he just kind of reports back to me and says, here's how they're doing. Right, and I'll keep track of those kinds of things. Um, some things to remember about this kind of work. Games often happen at times like spring break. Right? The world of communication does not sleep. Uh, we are 24-7 business, um, and so you have to kind of take that into account. In terms of scheduling, when games are out there, you will work that out with, with Patrick, right? but that very well might be part of your responsibility nights. Um, weekends, maybe even over the break, just kind of do some stuff. So keep that in mind. However, this is great opportunity. Again, I'd like to brag a little bit about some of our, our graduates. Uh, Jarrett Frazier is a guy that graduated, gosh, Jarrett graduated almost 10 years ago now? Nine, 11 years ago. 10 years. 12 years. Okay. 12 years ago, Jarrett Frazier. He did while he was here. I don't, I don't think it's been that long. I think it's been more like 9 or 10. We'll, we'll look and check out. Jared actually did his internships, worked with athletics quite a bit while he was here, was a camera operator for games, um, did that quite a bit. He ended up interning with the Olympics several times over. Um, today he works for NBC in Connecticut, doing all the work, continues to do all the camera and the studio work for the Olympic Games, just did uh, the games in Tokyo. This was the first one he didn't actually have to travel to Tokyo, um, or travel to the games. Um, has anybody ever heard of the new streaming service, Peacock, that NBC's putting out? Guess what his project is? Bringing Peacock and getting it up and running, right? So this is the kind of stuff that, that, that we do. So if you're interested in the practicum course, that is an elective course in the broadcasting sequence, um, uh, reach out to me, reach out to Patrick, and um, we'll kind of help you look at that. Uh, 307, advertising writing. You get to talk about it. This is the nice thing about this. Okay. Think you're creative. Think you can sell something. Well, that's what we're going to learn how to do in advertising. We're going to learn how to sell both with 
uh, actually with newspapers and radio, television, you can take a look at social media, and you'll be able to put together a really nice portfolio of advertising uh, for your uh, prospective jobs. You've got something that uh, you've got really something to show for. We'll be working with, you'll find a client to work with, and we can help you with that. And you'll do all kinds of various advertising for them. So put on your creative hat, and this is one where we do have a little bit of fun. What are some tax products you have? Uh, Jackson County Recycling. Yeah, we did Jackson County Recycling. We've done, uh, well, we, yeah, we did a number for the radio station, and that might be one that we want to work for as it comes up yeah. and starts to broadcast. We've had uh, several nonprofits in the area that we've worked with. So, yeah. so lots of different things that you lots can do. Lots of different things. And a different kind of writing than some of the other classes that we have, uh, we have you kind of go through. Another one that we're offering this spring, I am teaching this one, Health Communication. If you are a health comm major, this is a required course. It does satisfy as elective for a lot of the other majors. Health Communication, um, the interesting thing about what we do in the world of health is that how we communicate and all of the things that we think we know about communication, when we get into the context of health and health-related issues, it all changes, right? And the other thing is that if you've been in some of my classes, you have heard this, that we know that how well we connect to other people affects our health physically. I think that's a fascinating kind of thing. And how do we connect with other people? Through communication. So what we'll talk about in this class is all those different types of communication that come up in the world of health and how it affects us. So we will talk a little bit about patient-provider interaction. So you and your doctors or your nurses or your dentists or your physical therapists and how in that environment, how communication is so important to getting you um, healthy and accomplishing what you need to accomplish out of that particular relationship. We will look at the world of public health and health disparities, and we will talk a little bit about how communication can make the difference in helping us be a healthier society and a healthier community. We'll talk a little bit about things like health education, right, and how that, to get people um, information about health and how do we educate people on how to live healthy lives. We will talk a little bit about um, health care marketing and public relations and what the kind of work that you would do for, say, a hospital system or um, a health care uh, system. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the, the, the specialized world of um, agencies and how agencies are hired specifically to help do health communication for different kinds of clients. So you look at doing employee communication and healthcare marketing and all those kinds of things. So there's a lot of different kinds of things we do if you're interested in the world of health. This is a really interesting kind of course to take for that. Um, like I said, I'm teaching that in the spring. Um, and it's a required class if you were a health um, major. It's elective for everybody else. So this is, like I said, the old presentation. Writing for broadcast is another one. Um, there's, there's beautiful visuals that go along with it. <laughs> that will show some <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is a required class for uh, broadcasting students. Um, it has two prerequisites. You have to have uh, 240, COM 240, and you have to also have COM 255. Um, it's a class that we are revamping, and for the first time we're co-teaching. I'm co-teaching it with Matt. Um, <clears throat> So it, uh, it is envisioned to be very hands-on class. Um, I will cover the writing part, and Matt will cover the technical part. And um, in the second half of the semester, you guys taking this class will be producing newscasts, variety of length. Um, essentially, everything that you write in the class, it's a reporting class. Um, you will be putting it as a newscast. Um, you know, five minutes with um, shorter stories, uh, very little visuals, and we can even trans transform that one because we will have audio to, to run on the radio station if uh, Don is and his staff is interested in doing it. 
Um, it's a once a week, a block of three hours that will give us time to really work on hands-on. It's a, a larger class, so the enrollment is 25 uh, students. That means that we will divide you in groups and you will essentially produce not one, but two, um, uh, two different newscasts um, on a weekly basis once we start producing newscasts. Uh, and uh, it will all be with a goal to, for you to have a lot of um, hands-on experience, portfolio pieces, and by the end of the class, you know, um, you will rotate, so not everybody, um, you can, um, if you're interested to be on camera, you can be an anchor, uh, but most, almost all of you will have some experience in the back um, of working uh, in the control room. Right, Matt? Matt, did I miss something? Okay, you can't talk because he's close to the microphone. <laughs> so, Composition 352 writing for broadcast. Uh, radio 2. Um, so, one of the things that we have to kind of think about with some of our courses is that they are only offered certain semesters. Radio Production 2 is typically only offered in the spring. So, if you're looking to take it, now would be the time. Uh, radio Production 2 is one of the only classes you can take where there are no exams. There are projects. See, now he's just trying to sell you. Yeah, I am trying to sell you. Uh, there are projects, and these projects are judged based on professional acceptability for broadcast. Uh, you'll be doing everything from podcasts to commercials to public affairs programs. You'll be working with outside clients. Uh, for example, we've worked with the community table. We work with the local community garden, the Jackson County Animal Center. Uh, the, the, where the orphan dogs and cats go. Uh, we've done a lot of different projects, and the purpose of those projects is to get aired uh, on WWCU, and if they are of such quality, we might distribute them to some other stations in the region and say, here's a public affairs program for you that can air. The purpose of this class is for you to generate not only stuff that we can air, but stuff that can go in your portfolio in 496 and carry on to your employers. That's one of the things that we stress. So we work on high quality stuff. Uh, I don't know who that lady is on the uh, right up there. Uh, yeah, uh, that was a project we did with Chancellor. So it's, it's a hands-on class, very much a hands-on class. It's about projects. And you have a semester to do these projects. We try and sit. we do have some hard deadlines, but there are some we you do the project, it gets critiqued, and then you go back and you rework the project until it's right. Because that's what your employers are going to expect of you. It's got to be right, uh, and if it's not, well, it's not. Uh, so uh, 354, we only offer it in the spring. You do have to have taken Com 254 radio production because we assume you know everything that you should have known in radio production so that you can use the equipment and everything else. <coughs> All right, uh, TV2. So uh, Professor Walsh isn't here this morning. Um, he had another meeting that he had to be at. But TV2, we are offering this again. This is one of the first times we've offered this course two semesters in a row. So some folks are in TV2 now. We're offering it again in the spring. TV2 is our studio-based course, so when you're working, um, you will spend uh, the class moving over in the cat building in the TV studio, um, and so we'll look to do some kind of live types of shows. Um, I know that Matt has been helping out a little bit with that course over the, the this semester, and we'll probably continue to do that in the spring, um, and, and uh, with some of those kinds of work, so you'll learn to do uh, Multi-camera live television shoots, um, any kind of work that we do that is studio-based. If anybody is interested in that world of things like scripted television, for instance, one of the th they shoot those in TV studios. One of the things that we did this last year, this, this, this semester, there's going to be a story coming out about it, we had an agency that I am 
uh, connected to through a professional organization that approached me and said, hey, can we do, can we use your TV studio? We need to do a commercial TV shoot. And we said, yeah, sure. And so they actually came and used the, the, the TV studio to do that. That kind of work is done in a TV studio. And so we, uh, the, the students that were able to attend some of those sessions and kind of see how they worked, kind of saw how that came together. The fun part about that particular project was um, they actually involved the, uh, one of the students to be the clapper kind of to, to mark the, the scene, so that was kind of fun. Um, so that kind of work, TV studio, the TV studio. Has anybody not been in a TV studio? If you get the chance you should go, you, to go over there, go take a look. It's pretty cool, like all the equipment that is in there and what we're kind of, what we do over there. Um, everybody's a little bit amazed. Where is it at? Uh, the TV studio is in the Center for Applied Technology, so it's over kind of behind the Belk build, like in that, where the Belk building is and the Bardo Center, there's a back building there that's right across the, <coughs> the street from the football parking lot. That's the CAT building, and um, people think of that like engineering stuff is in there. Um, but, but our TV studio is in there, as well as for music. We're right next to um, a production studio for music. Uh, yeah, we have open office hours every day. So um, if you have questions about when those are, give me an email. But you can come over any day, and we can show you around. It's a fun time. Um, so TV2, you must have taken TV1 in order to take the TV2 class. Um, gender communication. I'm Dr. Betty Farmer, and I've been teaching gender communication for a lot of years. And what I'm about to say to you may sound really dramatic, but I think it's true. And that is that taking COM414 gender communication may just change your life. And you can notice here, Sarah Stanley, who took the class previously, is nodding in agreement. If it doesn't change your life, it will at least change your perspective. Because as a result of learning about gender and the cultural influences around gender, it will allow you to look at the world through a new set of lenses. Students tell me that I have ruined them because they can't look at a situation, a movie, a conversation with their friend, read an article, see an advertisement, look at a picture of a female chancellor without seeing it in a different way. The course is totally discussion-based. I will not lecture. I know that makes a lot of people happy. <laughs> You're going darn, right? I'll give you discussion questions prior to class. You will need to read and be ready to discuss with your peers your experiences, your examples of the topics that are currently in the world Today, current events is really very important in that course because we want to be able to look not only at gender communication in terms of our past and how it has influenced us, but also in current day and then moving forward in the future. We'll talk about a wide variety of topics from interpersonal relationships to romantic relationships to organizational concerns around gender, both for men and for women, as well as those who are non-gender conforming. So we will explore a wide variety of issues. So there really will be something for everyone, I think. And if you have any questions, Sarah says she's happy to provide <laughs> the behind the scenes of COM414 gender communication. It is an elective. It's only offered every couple of years. We'd love to see you in class. Thank you. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm kind of excited about our elective classes this spring. So that's a great one that everybody loves when they take it. So think about that one. Um, this is another popular class that um, Dr. Miltonsmeyer has been offering relatively recently. Let's talk about sex. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we talk about sex every class period, right? We're going to talk a lot about how do we talk about sex? How do we not talk about sex? How does that impact our lives by in, in the ways that we talk about it or in the ways that we fail to talk about it? So we spend a lot of time talking about sex ed. Uh, what happened in sex ed? Did we get any sort of education? Uh, what was lacking in that? We talked a lot about what are the rules surrounding sex and sexuality in our culture, in others' cultures, in our own minds. Where did, how did we develop some of these cultural rules, and how are they shifting? What do we expect from them? What do we want in our lives? So as much as our department is really focused on making you very prepared for the workforce, we want to provide a well-rounded curriculum so that you as individuals, as people, are leading really beautiful lives, right? We want you to be able to go into the world and be able to have really hard conversations, but necessary conversations, right? <laughs> sex is a fundamental part of our lives, and we want you to be able to get what you need out of sex. It's, it's part of having a healthy life, right? And having really challenging conversations. We spend a lot of time talking about um, uh, the history of sex and how we've evolved over time, where we go with. Um, what am I forgetting since my slide comes in? Cultural understandings. Oh, and we get to the media, of course, and all of the things that are in the media, as well as pornography. We have full conversation. So this class is very, I would say it is discussion-based. I uh, present a little bit of a lecture, but the class is meant to be a conversation between everyone. And I've, this is the second time I've offered this class, which is why it is as a topics class and not a structured class per se. But I gotta tell you, uh, if you enroll in this class, you are what makes the class, right? What you bring to the table every day as part of being involved in the conversation, sharing your experiences. No, I don't want to know about your sex life. Okay. But about our experiences and how we interact with one another and how we talk about our sexuality and what it means to us and what it might mean to others is so meaningful. When you share that in the class, we all have something to learn, right? So I think that this is one of the most beautiful classes that we offer, and I'm super excited to do it. We do have some projects. We do, again, it's discussion-based. It's meant to be a conversation. I'm hoping we can squeeze in a little podcast out of this, uh, potentially, and I have some ideas for some more creative projects. Um, because most of all, I want it to be a fun time. Yeah, I think um, both Dr. Farmer and Dr. Milton's wife have exposed our diabolical plot to ruin you. Right? <laughs> but a lot about what we're teaching you is about relationships, right? And we need that perspective to kind of understand and build better relationships. The beautiful thing about our program is we teach you to do that interpersonally and how it affects your lives day to day. And then we also teach you how to go out in the world and help other organizations build relationships with their constituents. And so you can actually get paid to do this kind of work. So this is why, um, as we present all this, think about kind of how um, another topics class we're offering for the first time this semester. Don't worry, it's not me teaching it. <laughs> uh, um, this class is taught by an adjunct, um, Ariel Hemet, and uh, um, Emmett. Uh, um, it's uh, it's what it is. Uh, writing about health and science. It's not necessarily reporting on it, although Ariel is. Um, a long-time reporter, freelancer, that makes a lot of a good living um, freelancing for Smithsonian uh, Magazine, um, Air and Space Magazine, a lot of uh, um, weird magazines that you will never think of uh, publishing, but essentially health and science is a lot of hard topics, but that is when you put it in a language understandable for most people, that's knowledge. And um, Ariel is a really good um, person to teach that class. It's not a reporting class, 
but you will be focusing on how to research and write about science and health for websites, consumer magazines, newspapers, magazines, and professional journals. You will develop six cents about the best science story opportunities. So you will be looking for opportunities for where you can publish those. And topics will range from biotechnology and health writing and editing to topics on engineering, climate change, space, and social sciences. Let me tell you a little bit about Ariel. Um, she holds a PhD from uh, University of Maryland, um, which is a pretty good uh, university in, in, in our field. She is a Fulbright Scholar in Kenya and uh, China. She is contributing an editor and writer to Smithsonian Air and Space, Mother Jones, uh, The Scientist, Cancer Nursing, uh, Miss Saturday Review, Detroit Free Press, Philadelphia Inquirer, Los Angeles Times, and many more. Um, so it will be an interesting class. We're hoping to get some um, science students there as well, which will give you a, an additional um, experience when you're communicating in the class. Another really interesting class this spring. Um, just one final note on classes. We are also offering some of the uh, traditional courses that we always offer um, for PR majors. Um, if you have taken all of the sequence and it's time to take PR campaigns, that will be offered in the spring. Dr. Farmer is teaching that class. A reminder about PR campaigns, it is only offered in the spring. So do not think that you might take it in the fall because we will not offer it in the fall. That can affect your graduation time, right? So make sure that you're signing up for that if, it's, if, you're, if that is kind of on the docket. Um, we are offering um, two sections of intercultural. Dr. Russell is teaching those in the back there. Um, uh, Dr. Vincent Russell joined us this fall. I should have introduced everybody. I didn't do very well. I'm a little flustered this morning to speak to all these. But Dr. Russell joined us this fall um, from UC Boulder and uh, is teaching two sections of, of intercultural. Um, both Dr. Russell and Dr. Nelson Meyer are teaching um, sections of interpersonal. We're actually offering three sections of interpersonal communication. Um, to try and, since those are popular classes and required by a lot of things. Um, News 2 is being offered. Um, I'm trying to think what else. That one is offered only in the spring, so oh, yeah. if you miss it, um, you will have to wait for another year. Uh, Cynthia Ray is teaching small group and team communication again, another one of our electives, so there's that one um, that we typically offer every semester if you've been looking for that. Uh, Theory. theory, com theory that we also always offer. Um, Mr. Connolly is teaching that in the spring. So a really nice variety of classes overall throughout the spring semester. Um, some great electives that I think will really help round things out. If you've been listening and paying attention, notice that we are working really hard to come up with assignments that will help you produce portfolio pieces. So pay attention to that. Think about that when you're doing that. Right? I know what happens in the lives of students. We get super busy, we get the pressures of all kinds of things with all of our other classes and deadlines and tests and papers and whatnot. Try to pull yourself out of that a little bit and be able to focus on those assignments and really put your all into them because it makes a difference. Right? You will be much happier when it comes time at graduation and your job hunting to be able to show this great work that we've kind of given you the opportunity to. Okay? Um, some things to think about from advising. Um, one, remember uh, how to get to the checklist of classes on the communication website. It is there, um, that home page. It has all of the information also about internships, the forms that we use in our internships, um, eight semester plans, all of that information is there. So spend some time looking through that. Um, it helps in terms of having a conversation with your advisor. Um, also know how to do a degree audit. Right? A degree audit is really important, and you should be doing them kind of on your own throughout your time, not just around advising day, right? making sure what's going on with you. Because the degree audit says, am I on track to graduate? Right? 
it becomes really important in your last couple semesters, like when we get, as your advisors, notes that say, you know, somebody failed a degree, a graduation check um, because of a problem, right? We don't want to have to get those and try and figure those out at the end. So learn how to do the degree audit. Essentially, it's on MyWCU, where you can, on the, the student side, on the right hand, left hand side of the page, you perform a degree audit. You'll select the current term, right? Um, you will then kind of have your, your what you were uh, declared as your major, and your program will come up. In this case, um, that's uh, anthropology. But for communication, it will list all that information here, along with your advisor, right? Make sure you're checking that advisor. If some of you are relatively new to communication or have recently declared your major, and it shows somebody that is your primary advisor that is outside of the comm department, please come talk to me. We need to get that changed. I will, I, it, the, the folks you need to be talking to are the advisors, the professors in our department. We are the ones that know when things are being scheduled. We know what's being taught. We know when things are being taught. Um, we know what you need to be thinking about in terms of graduation. We can also help you kind of navigate what the program is going to be better than anybody else on campus. So make sure if you have, sometimes we have advisors over at the advising center or over in athletics, right? Come talk to us in the department. Make sure you have a primary advisor in the department. If for some reason you don't, come talk to me, right? And we will make that change for you. You will then generate a new evaluation, right? You'll have to. Uh, choose the, the term that you are looking to graduate. What is that? And you run the report. Right? And that will give you everything that you need to have. Some important things to remember when you go through your graduation audit. One is you must have 120 hours to earn a degree from any university within the UNC system. Right? Not just Western. If you take all of your liberal studies courses, and you take all of our primary courses, our core courses in communication, and you take all of your concentration courses in, the commu in communication, and you do your minor that we require for communication, you will not have enough credits to graduate. <laughs> there are some additional free electives, so make sure you are paying attention to that number. Right? You need to get to 120 credits to graduate, the other thing that I like to remind people is when you're kind of adding numbers up, you have to take COM 496. It's required for all COM majors. It is one credit, not three. Right? So you don't want that to mess up your calculations either. Right? Important numbers to remember. 120 credits to graduate. 496 is one credit, so remember that. Um, other important numbers that I've mentioned, 60 credits to go into 296, 90 credits to take an internship. Right? Um, for your internships, you have to work 150 hours for three credits. Right? Those are all the real important numbers I like to remind my advisees about this. So keep that, um, those things in mind. Um, a few other reminders here um, as we get to the close of the meeting. Um, scholarships, don't forget to look for scholarships. We have a, scholarship applications are open. We usually award scholarships in the spring semester. Um, so this is, go check those out. Some of the ones that we offer in the communication department are these here. The Patrick Lee Carmody Fund Scholarship um, was to support students in um, the broadcasting program. The Roy Taylor uh, Scholarship um, is, is something for a rising junior to apply for uh, in, in, the, in the department. Um, the Dr. Kathleen Wright Scholarship, she used to be the uh, head of the Department of Communication. Um, she uh, established a scholarship open to all time students, so we, we award that. Um, the Arthur Anderson Endowed Scholarship Fund. Also, this is one that we share with Performing Arts. One year they give it over to Performing Arts, one year they give it to a comm student. Um, and so those are, when those are available. So be thinking about scholarships and taking a look and applying for those out there uh, online. Okay, student media and organization. So I'm going to talk first. Um, we have, and I've been kind of talking about, the Com Department uh, affiliated website. This is, a, this is a site that was student built and is student maintained. We actually have student workers that work on this. Jessica Posa, Josie Spence, are students that actually work on doing our social media and our website 
for the department. This is great portfolio building material and, and practice. Anybody can work on this. We are always looking for folks that want to help produce content for the Com Department website or our social media for the, for the department. If you are interested in that, come talk to me and we can help that out. Um, this is just some examples of some things that we have done. Um, social media posts, um, stories about different uh, activities that have kind of gone on, profiles, um, alumni, that's actually Daniel Ross. He's a singer-songwriter um, writing music for Florida Georgia Line, um, amongst others over in Nashville, Tennessee these days, one of our former students. Um, so if you're interested, um, let me know, and we can uh, put you to work working with web, WordPress and working with the social media for the department. Um, we've actually just now started um, a new social media management account with Sprout Social, so we're hoping to give more and more opportunities to learn and work with social media management software, and again, it's an important thing for uh, employers are looking for. Um, the Public Relations and Student Society of America is a PR professional organization. Um, I don't know if anybody's here today from PRSSA, um, but we schedule some different kinds of things. Still Hannah back there. Yeah, she doesn't want to say anything. I didn't, I didn't prepare her for it, so I'm not going to put her on the spot. Um, however, Hannah Breuer is involved with that, Morgan Gibson, Josie Spence. Um, if you have questions, you can talk to them. Come talk to me. We have our next event. It is open to everybody in the comm department. It is a week from tomorrow, uh, the 10th. It will be at 4.30. It will be in the uh, room across the hall from this auditorium. We are having Randy Wheelis. He is a staff writer and public relations specialist for Duke Energy, and he is coming to kind of talk to us um, next Wednesday night. So we invite everybody to show up for that. We've got a nice big room over there, so hopefully lots of people can come out. 4.30 p.m., uh, 207 is the room in Apodaca um, next week. So um, if you're interested, come check that out. These are really important organizations um, because we, again, hopefully we're getting back into this as we kind of get a little bit more normalized with whatever we have to do with mask wearing. But one of the things that I, I work to do every year is send students to the conferences, the national conferences for PRSSA. I have actually been able to pay for student trips to go to places like San Diego, Seattle, Portland, Oregon, Boston, um, Atlanta, Indianapolis. Um, I think there's one coming up. Nashville, etc. So anyway, check out PRSSA. Uh, WCJ. So uh, if you want to get published, um, the Western Carolina Journalist is uh, uh, one way to get published uh, stories. I'm not the one publishing it. Uh, if you're taking news reporting classes, I am the one checking and giving you grades for the stories. But uh, Tessa and other editors that work for the journalist, uh, they are the one publishing. Uh, and just make sure that the, uh, your story is publishable. Uh, it is a good way to start your resume, start your clips, and uh, get your uh, internship. Uh, a lot of our students start writing for the Western Carolina Journalist, and when they do uh, news reporting too, they do publish some in the uh, Silver Herald, and that is a, a different way to kind of get published in a real newspaper that is a community newspaper that covers community, not just campus. Um, and those stories are, are again republished on the journalist. Um, as long as you're publishing, I'll be happy to republish on the journalist. <laughs> because that uh, your success is our success. So good morning. I don't know if you've heard about SCJ. It's the Society of Professional Journalists. So any journalist in here, please raise your hand because we need people, big time, all of you. We're working really hard to create a newsletter that is going to be coming out every month. We want to inform you of the events that we do. In the past, we have done an AP style workshop, which is helpful for Com240, or I think that's the right one, but all of those journalism classes. You need to know AP style, and we want to help you be a better journalist. And becoming a part of SCJ is not just a college sort of organization. If you want to 
make it big time as a journalist <laughs> if you want to get a professional career in the journalism industry. This organization is going to help you network, it's going to help you find jobs, it's going to help you find funding for trips, for research, and that sort of thing. And Kata and I participated in a virtual <coughs> conference similar to PRSSA. SPJ has the opportunity to send you to some really cool places. Washington, D.C. is coming up in the fall. So, next fall. Next fall. So, come join us. If you have any questions, email me. We will be having some fun events this week. NBS. Do we have any questions? Yeah. Do you want to talk about it? Uh, NBS is sort of the broadcasting club. We, we are in the TV studio Thursdays at 6. I'm not used to talking on the mic. <laughs> but um, raise your hand if you are in NBS. Awesome. So basically, we just do um, news broadcasts basically right now, but we're looking for more people that are interested to do different types of things. So if uh, you have interest in any kind of video production, uh, Thursdays at six, come let us know. We are, we do other things like uh, we're going to have a speaker coming up. We're still working the kinks out of that, but um, it's super fun, especially if you like dealing with cameras, expensive equipment. Uh, even if you don't really know about it, if you haven't taken TV two or any other classes like that, come by and we can teach you. It's not really that hard, especially if you're open to learning and like dealing with that type of stuff. Ah, uh, that's interesting. There's a tower. This has been a long project. Uh, it's been a long project because the location for the tower was on top of a mountain where there was no electricity and where there were no roads. And we had to build all of that. And then we had to build a 180 foot tall self-supporting tower, all the buildings, all the generators, all the structures to go with it. And as we speak today, they're installing the transmitter in the new transmitter building to connect to the big new generator, to connect to Duke Power, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we're getting closer. But as you may have noticed, we're all wearing masks. This thing called the pandemic has been absolute hell on the broadcasting industry because of a shortage of chips, because of a shortage of copper. And you name it, there's been a shortage of it. And there's been delays, supply chain disruption. Uh, and right now, we're waiting on our final microwave link to go from campus up to the mountain. But when we're done, when we're done, we will have the most advanced high-definition radio station in the western end of the state. And the really exciting part about it is, when you hit that mic switch, you're going to be talking to people all the way north through Cherokee into southern Tennessee at Clayman's Dome. Mount LeConte, over to Mount Lynn Lowry, turn around and go south and just keep on going because you're going to pass through Franklin and go into the north end of Georgia. Going to the west, we're going to Bryson City. Going to the east, we'll go to Cashers, Highlands, and Brevard and Waynesville. Uh, we'll have the largest FM coverage area in the western end of the state. So it's going to be very, very exciting. You'll be working with entirely new studios entirely new transmitting gear. And it's coming about. Kendall Harris is our student general manager. Is Madeline Rickett here today? I haven't seen Madeline. Madeline's our student programming coordinator. What they're working on right now is we're going to take and hit the flush lever on our current website, and it's going to be gone. Uh, the new one is going to be ready for when we go on the air, and it's going to be incredible because we're working with all new software on down the line. The other thing they're working on is building the play clocks and assigning all the music categories and doing all the computing that has to be done because our system will have uh, something like eight or nine terabytes of storage. All of our music, we don't play back MP3s, all of our music is full wave format. And they're putting that all together so we can do live, live assist, voice track, and full automation. We run 24-7, 365. 
So if you're interested in this, uh, keep an eye out and contact Kendall. But sometime we're going to turn that puppy on and smoke the treetops. <laughs> because what's really incredible is that from the top of that tower, we can see about 35 miles in all directions. It's incredible. It's the perfect place to put an FM antenna. So yeah, new studio upgrades, etc. So um, that's kind of where we're at today. There's lots of exciting opportunities coming along, lots of opportunities for you guys to jump in wherever your interests are. I highly recommend that as you're planning your schedule, that you're thinking about your internship, that you're thinking about graduation and developing that path there. And along the way, take advantage of all these opportunities to go out there and do this work. It will make you a better communicator. It will make you a better professional. It will make you more marketable on the job. And it will actually, as Dr. Farmer said, change your life. So have a great advising day. Let's hope that will turn back up. And as you go out, there's coffee, donuts, bagels, etc., kind of outside. Just don't bring them back in here because I'll get in trouble. <laughs>